Roberts. I'm an economics professor at Arizona State University. And today we're going to continue our discussion of public goods. And what I'm going to do is show the contrast between what the market demand for a public good looks like versus what the market demand for a private good looks like. So we'll carry on with Larry Curley and Mo that we talked about in the previous video. And this could be Larry's demand for, I don't care, street lights. This is Curly's demand for street lights. This is Moe's demand for street lights. And here's the supply curve. Now, we can do two things with these demand curves. We could say, well, what if this weren't a public good? What if instead of this being the demand for street lights, this were the demand for apples or some private good? Then what would the market demand look like if, this, if these were the demands for a private good? What would the market look like? What would the price be? And what would the output be? And so we can do that by summing up these demand curves. And we get the market demand curve for, again, let's pretend that now this is a private good. Let's treat these demands as if they are for a private good. And so I'm going to sum up these three demand curves. And what we get is the quantity demanded equals 45 minus 5.5p. So this is the demand curve if this good um, is a private good. So if this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve, if we set these two equations equal to one another, which I will do, where will I do that? I'll do it right here. Um, so 45 minus 5.5p equals 0.5p. So we have demand equals supply. And when we solve that, we find that the price is 7.5 and the quantity is um, 3.75. 3.75. So if we were to draw demand and supply, 8.245. So here's my demand curve. And my supply curve looks like this. And 7.5, that's the price. And the output is 3.75. So if this is a private good, a private market, then we would sum up these demand curves horizontally. We would say, well, if the price is $1, how many would Larry buy? If the price is $1, how many would Curly buy? If the price is $1, how many would Mo buy? And that's how we get this demand curve. Now, if we assume that instead of this being a private good, let's pretend that these demand curves now are actually the demand for some public good, streetlights. Um, then we have to sum these demand curves up, but we have to sum them up vertically instead of horizontally. So what I'm going to have to do is transpose these and use the inverse function. So I'm just going to, so what that means is I'm just going to solve all of these equations for P instead of for Q. So um, Larry's equation, when we just solve this equation for P, it comes out to be P equals 20 minus 2Q. That's the same equation, just solve for P. When I solve Curly's equation for P, P is equal to 15 minus Q. When I solve Cur uh, Moe's equation for P, it's P equals 5 minus 0.25Q. So, Public good. Public good says unit number one is worth how much to Larry? Unit number one is worth how much to Curly? Unit number one is worth how much to Mo? So what we're doing is we're taking a quantity and we're summing up the values vertically. And so this equation in terms of a public good, when we sum it up, again, it's a linear approximation, but P equals 40 minus 
3.25 cubed. So this is my equation if it's a public good, my market demand. This is my market demand if it's a private good. Again, you could solve this for P, but you, then you would see the comparisons. So if this is the demand for a public good, and here's the supply, so we said supply equals demand. We need to solve that for P, because this is already solved for P. So let's just take um, QS equals 0.5P and solve it for P. So that means P equals 2 QS. So set this equal to this. And so we have 2Q equals 40 minus 3.25Q. And so the quantity, in this case, for the public good, is equal to 7.62. So the quantity is a lot bigger if it's a public good than if it's a private good. And the price is a lot different. The, price, the quantity is 7.62, then the price is going to be 15.24. And so my, my demand curve looks like this. 12.3, and the price is 40. There's my demand curve. My supply curve is still the same. And this is 7.62, and this is 15.24. So you can see the difference if the good is a public good or a private good using the very same demand curves. And again, because with a private good, you sum horizontally across a price. If it's a public good, you sum vertically across a quantity. And it gives us two different demands. With public goods, again, we still have this problem. How are we going to pay for this? 7.62 is the optimal number. And 15.24 is the uh, price. And so, um, we're going to have to collect that money from Larry, Curly, and Moe, and we have to figure out how to do it. And it, that's the next difficult problem. Public goods are big problems. Um, and we often get an overproduction of public goods because the cost of the public good is going to be shared. If somebody else is going to pay for it, I'm having steak. You know, if I'm paying for it, it's hot dogs. So, um, anyway, so that's a difference between um, public good and a private good using the simple algebra.